Okay, everyone. So there's been this browser. I've kind of been following the this particular pull request for for a while now. Um, Cute browser. For those that don't know, it's a kind of a minimal web browser built on the Qt framework using Python. So what what I wanted to kind of point out more recently is that they in the development branch they just introduced oh brave like ad blocking so if I go to my config um so with this this allow allows you to have more in-depth ad blocking than was possible before. So before it used to be like purely host ad blocking. So kind of like your oh, host file, it would basically block based on that. Whereas this one lets you use like the easy list, like you block origin list and others or ad block plus. So it can use those for a more intuitive ad blocking system. So you can actually get better ad blocking on YouTube and such. So I've been kind of following this in my email for the la better part of, I think, the last year or so. And it's finally gotten merged into the development branch, which is what I'm currently running at the moment until it gets released on, oh, stable. So the main thing to it is by default... Um, it has the Brave Like ad block enabled if you've got the right package installed. So the package you're looking for, and this one's in the AUR, is the Python ad block. So, oh, actually it's in the community repos. So it is in the official in the official arch repos. So you can use that. But what that will do is like it says there, it's a brave ad block library. Okay. So yeah, it's basically implements Brave's slightly older Rust ad block, but it's a Python wrapper for it. And it allows Qt browser to take advantage of that in order to block ads. So if I, example, go to YouTube. So there are some hiccups that I've noticed with it. It doesn't completely block some of the ads and I've noticed some banner ads pop up. Well, I mean, on the front page, it doesn't block everything. But other than that, if I go to, let's pick one that's kosher. My watch history is being revealed now, or stuff. Uh, yeah, let's go with that one. So it does this thing for the most part, where it pops up these ads rather than the intrusive video ones because of it. So if there were a better way to get that to work, um, other than that, it works pretty well. So, and sometimes you'll get the top corner ads that pop up in here and those don't show up really. So, but it really does pretty well. So I haven't tested this one yet. Dungeon.netto. So there are a couple sites that I've been back and forth to that had really crazy ads to them. <clears throat> so yeah, it looks like it blocks it pretty well. So um, I don't know if you caught that. One of the ad block lists that I have is kind of some of the Brave social ones. So it kind of enables but disables it. So... Normally here in the sidebar, um, it's got all kinds of ads and it's normally got a video ad, but it looks like it's been disabled. 
So depending on the list that you pick, and I guess the ones I would recommend right now are the ones that I have listed here that kind of cover it pretty well. I think the YouTube ones is a list issue that I may be using a wrong list or something else. So that's a possibility, or I may have too many redundancies that it's kind of trying to overlap each other. But... So the other one that would be possible, uh, if I can, Obapedia has had issues with having lots of ads on it. Let's go to, Pokemon card GB, GB sets. I'm, I'm, you know, beginning. Yeah, I like that. So, no banner ad up here. So yeah, for the most part, it does pretty well. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Where's, where's the advertisement? But yeah, so I think the next one add-on that they are going to work on is going to possibly be the extensions. I know that's kind of been one that's kind of been on the table. They've got an issue for that on the GitHub. So if I go to... <clears throat> do, 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 do. Yeah, GitHub added dark theme so I can disable some of this. It does support stuff for user styles. I'll kind of cover that in two seconds, but... Yeah, so yeah, this is the repo. But yeah, the ad block works pretty well, so I may be switching back to this as my main browser. Um, Brave has kind of dropped some, Brave's dropped some of the referral things and has also, um, some of the payouts seem to be a bit lower that they were doing. So I don't know. It may be the way that I've been using my computer recently or something else. But I may be switching. I was using Cute Browser for a little bit as my main browser. So for those that don't know, Cute Browser is based on Qt WebKit, which is based on basically ungoogled Chromium. So, <clears throat> basically anything that works in Chrome would work in Qt Browser, but it also uses Vim keys for, like, scrolling and stuff and, like, navigating and what all. So, opening new tabs and what all and that not. So, you can rebind those, and it, you can kind of export an example, config.py which is kind of the main way that you configure things. You can configure it through the GUI. Okay, so if you go to cute colon forward slash forward slash settings, you can actually edit the config in here as well if you want to. I mean, it's not quite the best. Well, it shows you your settings, but... I guess it's possible to edit it in here as well. So it would export to like a config.yaml, which this config.load autoconfig um, tells it to load it, but I've turned it off because if you leave this out, it'll scream at you that it's not there, which is really weird. But you can see that I've got a couple other binds as well. So what... It does support pinning tabs. So if I go wanted to app.com open discord inside of my browser. Then I open a new tab and let's go to LF doc just for fun. 
So one thing you can do is you can cycle through the tabs with Shift and J and K. So if for your keyboard oriented stuff, you can find all these shortcuts and whatnot in there. So like it showed in here, if I wanted to pin Discord as a tab. Oh, wait, what? Okay, give me a second. They changed it. Okay, cool. So, this is a fun way to show this off. So if I pin, so I can write the config. So currently it won't load up my config. So I have to go config and source, and it'll reread the config file for Cute Browser. And now I can go and I can pin the tab like that. So it's got the pin tabs like any other browser pretty much. And you can kind of cycle through it just about the same. Basically. Um, one thing here. So if I open up YouTube, let's actually just search for something on there. Mm. Okay, so as you also saw, I've got another shortcut in there. What Cute Browser lets you do is also spawn other applications that you can uh, use, manipulate like URLs or inputs with. So what you saw before with like the letters and the side there are what are called hints. So these are hints. So what I've done just now is I've pulled up one of my shortcuts that will allow me to open a link in MPV. So you can basically spawn other applications to open links up. So like if you were torrenting something, for example, you could set up a shortcut to spawn one such there, and then so on and so forth. So this particular one spawns MPV and it detaches it so that Cute Browser doesn't, isn't the parent of it or owns it. So I can close Cute Browser without MPV closing. But it'll also tell MPV that once the video is over, you can quit. So this also actually works for those that might be interested with Twitch streams as well. If it wants to pull up. Or with Twitch videos. So if I go back and I find it's easiest if you take your knife hint for it and scrape out a basic shape. Let's do an old bar today. What the heck? Maybe we'll do find a big, it's easiest big if you take your knife. And say, scrape out five, three letters, basic shape. Let's do an old bar today. So okay. you see that Twitch pulls up just fine. And then let's just for fun, just to kind of sink it in, um, we will go to my PeerTube instance. Doggone it, trending. Why? I don't know what's up with the trending here. Some people are super weird. Oh. Let's do that. Give it a second. It's got to figure out. So MPV does support in okay, guys. I got a special one for you today. I've got a meditation. So MPV, well, it uses YouTube DL as an interface. And YouTube DL actually has support for a lot of other sites in it as well. So that's kind of one option is you can add those kind of custom keys in there and also change the colors of different things as well. So the tab colors that you've been seeing are not the default tab colors. Um, it does have PDF reader stuff inside of it. It does kind of download it in a weird way and then open it in Qt Browser using PDF.js, which is what Chrome uses to open PDFs. Okay, and then you saw me open the config in 
Oh, the editor, so you can configure it like that. Do, do, auto load. I should, could probably change that. It does have spell check. Uh, da, da, you can customize a lot of things. So you've been seeing me also use shortcuts for searching on YouTube and stuff. So what it lets you do is it actually lets you add your own search engine shortcuts to it. So if I went to, and I opened up DLive, for example, cause this one I haven't used yet. This one I just barely added. So I can go, actually, to another page. The documentation explains how to do this on your own. And actually, it's pretty simple, as you can see. Most sites, so if I go to, so you open it in a new tab, just like you would with when you're typing in a URL. And then you can enter your shortcut, and then anything after that is searched for. So I can add that into DuckDuckGo, which is, as you probably saw, is not my default search engine. I don't know why Hello Neighbor came up. That's funny. Hey, hey, look at that. Thank you, DuckDuckGo. Um, but yeah, you can add a YouTube search. You can go directly to someone's Twitch page. You can search your local classifieds. You can search any other engine. Let's actually... Okay, there we go. So if we go... So one thing with oh, Cute Browser, if you want to get the URL, you can go YP and it'll basically get a prettified URL. So we can go back to here. Let's open new tab and then I, IG, IG Info Galactic because I don't use Instagram. And we can add that in. So search query. What we're going to replace that with is the two curly brackets. Okay, so now that we've got that added, we go config source, and then let's go to, just to kind of prove a point. And then we can go and actually, let's do this. So if I go Shift O, it adds the minus T switch, which allows me to actually open it in a new tab. So if I go IG, you can see Info Galactic comes up. Let's type in my query, and you see it takes me directly there. So that's kind of some cool stuff. You've got a lot of options as well for titling and everything, until you want to do everything with it because it's in Python. So yeah, you can configure it to your heart's delight and there's plenty in the documentation on doing that. Um, but yeah, the ad block has kind of been the big thing. So anybody that was looking at maybe switching to something that might be a bit lighter, this is a much lighter option. There are more things coming for it. But yeah, you can join the Discord, scream at me, tell me that um, Cute Browser doesn't work well with Discord. And I will see you all in later.